Thursday Night Tailgate, where the spotlight is always on the positive. Tune in Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to hear your favorite NFL legends, players, and coaches sharing their stories. Now back to Chris and Bob. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. And now joining us on the Kyvin Foods guest line is the first member of our 2017 Guest Hall of Fame class, and it is the Dean of Atlanta Sports Talk Radio, Mr. Bo Bach. And Bo has been a tremendous friend of the show over the last few years. He's a guy that Bob and I always look forward to having back on the show just as quickly as we possibly can because we enjoy him so much. He's been the Dean of Atlanta Sports Talk Radio since 1973. No one knows more about Atlanta sports and the suffering of the Atlanta sports fan better than Bo does. His insights and knowledge are second to none in this town. We love having him as part of the show. We're excited and honored to induct him tonight into the Thursday Night Tailgate Guest Hall of Fame. Hey, Bo, Chris, and Bob, uh, Chris, thank you Chris, for all you've done nice. for us over the years. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm totally uh, flattered and honored uh, by that. Thank you. So, What are you guys uh, Bo, doing? What's that? I said, what are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> well, we're you enjoying said, our sixth great? anniversary you... special tonight. It's been a great night so know, far. We're just great. getting kicked off. Are you engraving my name anywhere, like on a wall? Have you got chalk? <laughs> Can you put it up in chalk? Anything. In our mind. Yeah, we do. We got your name mind. up in, in chalk. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> So, Bo, I want to start off our time with you tonight by getting your thoughts on uh, on the Falcons. They got off to a little bit of a sluggish start week one against yeah. the Bears, but looked really good yeah. Sunday against Green Bay. Your thoughts, how are you feeling about the Falcons so far? I, I feel great. You know, I've been saying all year, you know, we're, we're the best team in the, in the league. We're going to the Super Bowl. This is our year. Last year wasn't our year, and, and what really annoys me about this jerky market of ours because we have no sports media here is that everybody keeps bringing up how we blew the game and how disappointed we are and all that nonsense hey we were not supposed to be there it was one of the great runs in the national football league we took off in week three week one and two last year we would just look like 2015 and we're just going through the motions week three against New Orleans. We were a totally different football team. It's almost like the light went on, you know, so this year, this is our year. And then when we opened up uh, so sluggish against Chicago and green Bay looked like they were mid season lubricated in their first week, they were, they were on top and they were flying around. They looked like they were mid season. I didn't think we were going to beat Green Bay because of that. And we come out uh, not having gelled yet and just put a number on them. We're a great football team, Chris. People don't realize this yet. So to that end, Bo, you, know, you, you look at you know the beginning or you know, the first half of the season, right? They got the Lions Sunday in Detroit. Then they're home right. against the Bills. Then they get an early bye week, followed by the mm-hmm. Dolphins at home. And then they go right. to Foxborough with a rematch for the Patriots. Any right. reason to think right. they don't step into that game against New England undefeated? They should be. They should be. I, I fully expect them to be. Um, you, uh, when did you really get a, uh, a chance to enjoy Matt Ryan in this setting with an offensive line, with the best running tandem in the National Football League, with Julio Jones, um, you know, with you know uh, Taylor Gabriel, you know, the receiving core that we had, and the difference, the thing that differenti- differentiates us is that is that Devontae Freeman. I mean, we've got a top flight running game with maybe the best aerial game in the league. Mm-hmm. Bob, questions for Bo? Well, congrats, Bo. Again, it's it's always an honor, and I want to just stay on that whole Falcon thing because yeah. I think you're right, Bo. The the offense of that team is it's right up there with one of the best I've seen in a long time. Because when right. you have a quarterback totally like balanced, Ryan, Bobby, yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. I mean, you got Coleman yeah. and Freeman, you got a couple running backs, right. you got a bunch of right. wide receivers, you got a tight end right. that, that's looking good too. Austin Hooper, but, yeah, uh, looks great. Yeah, and and it, you put it all together, and it, there's no, they're getting to be like the New England of the South as far as 
just showing up, Bo, and it's going to score 35 points. That's the type of team they have. But I'm wondering yeah, about and like, we model and we modeled after that, Bobby. You know, oh, that, well, yeah, that, yeah. that's where Tom. That's where Thomas Dimitrov is from. Our our one-time GM. I don't even know what his title is anymore. He's got so many assistant GMs up there and personnel guys. But uh, he, you know, that him and and. Um, uh, Dan, you know, subscribe to that, and you know, Arthur from the beginning uh, has really tried to build this club in New England's image. And as far as Matt Ryan, Bo, if this guy, it, it makes me laugh because up here in the Northeast, as you know, Bo, it's all about New York and. Right, around sure. the areas, you're thinking right. Brady and uh, Eli Manning, and of course branching out a little bit, you got Roethlisberger and everything. Matt Ryan might be the seventh or eighth guy you mention, and uh, right, maybe he likes right, it that right. way. But down in Atlanta, that guy is as solid as a quarterback as you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. And I think Chris, uh, you know that uh, you know you might not mention him till seven or eight, but the beauty of him is I don't think he cares. I mean, everybody would like to be the number one quarterback in the league or one, two, three. I don't think he cares that people pass over him. He's still he's still on a quest to prove himself and his career and this team. I mean, you got to really admire his mental toughness. And he's not a jerk. He's a, he's a you know he, he's a, he's a locker room favorite. And this is what I think a, a, com- a lot of people are comparing this team to the Seattle team that quote unquote blew that Super right. Bowl a few years ago. But this team right. to me, they seem like they're more all on the same page, and of course, they, they seem to be a little bit mentally more uh, strong and able to handle adversity than the Seattle team. Uh, how about your thoughts on the makeup of this team mentally? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's so unusual for us, you know, in Atlanta. We haven't had mentally tough teams. The only mental, mentally tough teams we had was when uh, Jerry Glanville was the defense coordinator from 77 to 82, and then when he was head coach from 91 to 93. You know, that's the only time we had a culture, we had uh, a, a, any type of describable mental toughness, and now all of a sudden for this team – to be a smart team, to be mentally tough, to be uh, uh, have great camaraderie and guys playing for one another, you really have to credit Dan Quinn. Because I, I, I always say, guys, you know, it's like a, a, everybody can X and O. You know, every guy that gets to be a head coach in the National Football League knows the game and how to X and O, how to draw up a play, how to stop a play. But the guys who win are the leaders, those guys who can sell it to the team, those guys who can get the team pumped, those guys who can create camaraderie, you know, in, in the uh, in the locker room, and that's what Dan Quinn is. I mean, he just he just directs everything. Well, I want to switch gears a little on you and talk a little baseball. And when, last time we had you on the show, you had some high expectation <laughs> yeah. for the Braves this season. I thought, yeah. you know, I think you thought that they were going to be a little bit better than they were yeah. last year, a little bit, certainly better yeah. than where they're at now. So your thoughts, mm-hmm. what, do you, what are you seeing? What, what, what derailed the season for them? I think what derailed the season is that uh, you know, we, we thought we'd get some more innings out of Cologne. I liked when we made that. I liked R.A. Dickey, who's pitching right now, and he's 10 and 11 on the year. Uh, I mean, these guys are innings eaters. Uh, but as far as the young guys coming up, I think we might have been a little premature with that uh, because don't forget when Smoltzy came up and Glavin came up, there were two or three years there when they were learning how to pitch. And it's a big difference between being effective in the minor leagues and then coming up here where everybody can hit. And so uh, I, I just think that those guys took their lumps and, and didn't respond. We, we projected their success a little bit too early. That, you know, so that's you think, first and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. So are they a year away, you think, two years away? Where, where do you find I them? I think two years away. But the other thing is, don't forget, we're not good at this. This, this is not the same organization that built that last uh, successful organization that went from 91 and, and, and 14 years after that. Uh, we win uh, 14 divisions, but only completed the deal one time. But 
1986, we were so bad, about you know, worse than we are right now, that Stan Caston, the general manager at the time, who now owns a piece of the Dodgers, he's uh, he said we're going. He talked Ted into shutting down uh, our competitive spirit for lack of a better term. We were going to draw everything. We made announcements to, to the public. Say, look, we're, we're not going to be competitive for a couple of three years. We have to rebuild the minor league system. I mean, this was a big deal that no one ever mentions or, or even talks about, but that was, a, that was a huge deal. And we had two guys, Roy Clark, who was our director of, of scouting, who's back with us now after going to Washington. He's back with us now. And the other guy who's not back with us was the director of player personnel, uh, Paul Snyder. Paul Snyder and Roy Clark are great baseball men. And you say that about a lot of guys, but a lot of guys aren't great baseball men. They just hang around. Like, for instance, Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox was a great baseball man. He was just a hell fellow, well met. He was around the league for 100 years, you know. I mean, it was was absolutely terrible. Just absolutely terrible. What he was, he was given the best team in baseball and the best pitching staff in the history of baseball, and he won one time. Uh, so, so what we're talking about now is moving forward and trying to duplicate that feat. Well, you know, it will be rare when anybody duplicates the feat because not only were we the best, but the division was the worst uh, in that period. So we don't have Paul Snyder. We've got Roy Clark, but in a different role. Um, and uh, I don't think it can be done again like that. We're, they don't forget, we don't have an owner. So there's nobody for, for uh, Schuerholz, who's the uh, vice CEO, and Terry McGurk, who's the CEO, knows nothing about athletics or sports or competition or anything. You know, he's, 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 he's a Princeton goose. And, uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we're talking baseball here. And then you've got Schuerholz, who's working so many deals behind the scenes that he can't pay attention to baseball, nor does he care. Every time he's interviewed, he tells, keeps telling everybody how he came in in 91 after this deal was set, guys. After this team was set, he came in in 91, he keeps saying, and we won 14 straight divisions. I mean, you, you talk about and, and ends up in the Hall of Fame because of our jerky media here. So, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's not going to happen like it did last time, if it ever happened. Bo, before we let you go, t- you know, talk about your daily newsletter and the things that, that you're doing now that our listeners can tune into and, and listen and follow you. Yeah, well, if, you, if you'd like to... Uh, we do a commentary every night, and it comes out via mass email, via constant contact. So if you send me your email address, I'd be happy to put you on the list. And it, it's probably the only media in town. Well, it is the only media in town. who's trying to not be, you know, an idiot. But it is the only media in town that um, – says who can play and who can't play, who can coach, who can't coach, who can general manage and who can't general manage. The only opinion in this town, believe it or not. I mean, is that incredible? This sports town of Atlanta, Georgia, when I came here in 1973, we had had four pro franchises, including the Flames and hockey, who had it going on pretty good. We won a soccer NASL championship with the Chiefs. We had two major NCAA universities and conferences and the best motorsports and and tennis in the world and golf, and nobody was saying it, and everything was in the tank, and nobody was saying anything. It was was absolutely incredible to me that this was just allowed to go on and fester and fester, and the guys at the top of these organizations were filling their pockets. It was absurd. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, uh, I, you know, after being on the air for 42 years, I started this uh, commentary thing. And then I'm on uh, uh, News Talk 1160 and Facebook video every Friday at 2 o'clock. So. But if you'd like to, my, my email address is bobock at gmail.com, B-E-A-U-B-O-C-K at gmail.com if you'd like to receive that. And I'd love to send it to you. There you go. 
Bo, we can't thank you enough for how great you've been to Bob and I over the last several years, and what a wonderful contributor you've been to the show. Thank you Uh, you so much for your time and the things that you have added. You're fantastic. Right. You know what? I appreciate that, Chris and Bob. But you know know what's going to happen to me tonight when I go to bed? I'm going to bed as a Hall of Famer. That's right. I'm going to bed as a Hall of Famer. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Take you. care, bro. One. Thank you for everything. We love you. All the best to you and your family. Say thank you. See, Take thank care. you very much. See, bye. That is the great Bo Bach. He is the Dean of Atlanta Sports Talk Radio. Nobody better in this town than Bo. So we always enjoy getting to spend, you know, typically a little a little bit longer with Bo. Hopefully we get him back on the show again real soon. We've got the second member of our guest hall of fame, our 2017 class hanging on the line, EJ junior. We're going to get to EJ on the other side of this, uh, quick, uh, station break. <laughs> 